Did higher levels of atmospheric oxygen during the Mesozoic allow dinosaurs to get very large? I've seen this claim repeated a lot, and it goes that with higher concentrations of oxygen, the dinosaurs could more easily deliver it to all their body tissues, allowing them to attain sizes much larger than they could otherwise. Now, it is true that atmospheric oxygen levels in the Cretaceous were higher than they are presently, but the problem with this argument is that the largest animal that ever lived, i.e. the blue whale, is still alive. When I brought this point up to people who made the aforementioned claim, some even having college degrees, they often fail at some pretty basic biology. They'll usually say something along the lines of, well, you know, you have different oxygenation levels in the ocean. Of course, whales breathe air. Another argument I've heard is that dinosaurs need the extra energy from all that oxygen to hold their weight up. Meanwhile, whales have their weight supported by the water. The problem here is that what limits how big an animal can get on land is structural, not bioenergetic. As you increase the size of an animal, the cross-section of the legs will increase as a function of the length squared, while the total mass it'll have to support will increase as a function of the length cubed. You know, the good old square cube law. This means that the load each square centimeter in the leg has to support will increase until it breaks under the weight of the animal. Having more energy available won't negate this limitation. Even though they don't have to support themselves on land, blue whales can easily move at 40 kilometers an hour, and with an average weight of 100 tons, this will take a lot of energy. So, they don't seem to have much of a problem delivering oxygen to their muscles. Not only that, blue whales are holding their breath most of the time, using 85% of the oxygen inhaled, while we only use 20%. So, low oxygen concentrations would be a bigger problem for a marine mammal than a dinosaur. Furthermore, living dinosaurs, i.e. birds, have a unidirectional respiratory system that is far more efficient at extracting oxygen from the air than mammalian lungs. The bones of non-avian dinosaurs indicate that they had these lungs too. In fact, the end of the Triassic saw a mass extinction, and some lines of evidence indicate that there was a drop in atmospheric oxygen around this time. The first dinosaurs appeared in the mid to late Triassic, but they didn't become dominant until the Jurassic. It may be that the low supply of atmospheric oxygen gave dinosaurs with their unique respiratory systems an advantage during the mass extinction allowing them to diversify and take over the empty niches. So, if anything, it was low oxygen that facilitated the age of the dinosaurs. While more oxygen wouldn't allow vertebrate animals to get larger, is the same true for invertebrates? During the Carboniferous period, large swamps began to pop up around the world, and the trees which grew then produced a structural support molecule known as lignin. This couldn't be broken down by contemporary decomposers. Because decomposition was inhibited, photosynthesis outpaced it, and thus oxygen was produced faster than it could be consumed, giving rise to concentrations over 30% greater than today. This period famously saw supersized insects and other terrestrial arthropods evolve. While vertebrates actively pump air or water across their respiratory surface and then pump the oxygenated blood to their tissues, Arthropods have a series of tubes running through their bodies known as tracheae, which deliver oxygen to their tissues. As such, they rely mainly on diffusion to circulate oxygen in their body cavity, although it appears that some use waves of muscular contractions running through the walls of their tracheae to make the air flow at a greater rate. Because the total diffusion rate is a function of the surface area, the oxygen concentration, the temperature, and some constant k, we again run into the square cube law. As the length increases, the volume increases faster than the surface area. In other words, the total mass of the body tissues increases faster than the area over which oxygen can diffuse into them does. Looking at their biogeography, the largest terrestrial arthropods live in the tropics, where the greater temperatures increase the oxygen diffusion rates. That said, however, there is a terrestrial arthropod, the coconut crab, whose size exceeds the giant insects of the Carboniferous. So instead of just oxygen, another factor which limits the size of a terrestrial arthropod may be their exoskeleton. Relative to the overall weight of the animal,
The exoskeleton which arthropods possess is much more massive than the endoskeleton of vertebrates, and thus, from a structural perspective, the square cube law will limit how large they can get before it would a vertebrate. So, did oxygen availability really limit how large arthropods could get? Well, yes and no. For starters, one of the most famous giant insects from the Carboniferous was Meganeera, the giant dragonfly. Flight will use more energy and thus consume more oxygen per time unit. As such, it's doubtful a dragonfly the size of Meganeera could get airborne in the modern atmosphere. But one important distinction to make is that between the fundamental and realized niches. The fundamental niche refers to all the niches an organism could occupy given the environmental conditions. The realized niche is what can be occupied once you factor in biotic variables such as competition and predation. For example, the Catholomus barnacle, which inhabits nearshore areas, can live on both rocks that are permanently submerged or those that are exposed at low tide. So both of these habitats are part of its fundamental niche. However, when other species are present, namely semibalanus barnacles, Catholomus are all competed on the rocks that are permanently submerged and only live on the rocks that are exposed during low tide, making this their realized niche. As such, while it may be possible for terrestrial arthropods the size of those who lived during the Carboniferous to survive on the contemporary Earth, the lower concentrations of oxygen would mean that they would move around much more slowly, which would in turn make them too vulnerable to vertebrate predators who aren't as limited by the square cube law. This may also explain why coconut crabs only live on small islands, because if you see them move around, they are incredibly slow. On the continents, there are any number of large carnivores who would find it all too easy to catch and kill a coconut crab. So, the lower concentrations of oxygen in the modern atmosphere wouldn't have altered the fundamental size limit of terrestrial arthropods, but instead lowered their realized size limit. In summary, while oxygen availability likely did limit the size terrestrial arthropods could get, the limiting factor of deciding how big dinosaurs could get was structural, and if anything, less oxygen gave them the edge.